Hello everyone, I'm Babak Golriz and I'm your host for this edition of Golbezan podcast. I'm happy to be here with Sina Samiyan and Pejwan Pars today to preview Iran's Asian Cup squad for 2019 in the UAE. Hello everyone. Hi guys, uh, it's good to be here again. It's been a while and uh, I'm looking forward to the competition, but more so talking to you guys about the uh, issues at hand. Hi Babak uh, and everybody listening to Golbezan. If I'm not mistaken, This will be our 100th episode, so uh, a great, a great era, definitely. Congratulations to everyone, and most of all, thank you very much to everyone who has listened to our podcast for the previous 99 editions. A little shout out to Pasha as well, who's not able to be here with us today, but uh, his spirit is with us. So now let's get started. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a setup. With the Asian Cup squad, which was announced yesterday, there was a little bit of a hiccup before the squad with a typical fake news lineup that was released, in which Karim Ansari Farid missed out on. But ultimately, other than injuries, I don't think there were so many surprises. Pejman, I want to start with you. How did you feel when you saw the list the second time around? Um, well, uh, I was kind of surprised by a couple of names. Uh, by now, I should have learned that... If something that I always get wrong is the lineups or the squad uh, guessings, so I shouldn't be surprised by now uh, what Karaj does. But uh, players maybe like uh, Nuro Lahi or Kano needs are gone. Even if they've been in and out of the squad a couple of times, uh, I was a bit surprised. But then again, uh, I don't know who else we could have taken in considering all the injuries that uh, we have. Well, not uh, yeah, the, the injuries that uh, make this squad. Uh, a bit weaker, actually, than the World Cup squad. And I guess we'll uh, soon talk more about uh, the lack of good players in this squad. Sina, uh, when we look at the squad list, a lot of them are familiar names, but then you see people like Hayom Nyazmand in goal, uh, who is a new name around the squad. Kanoni, again, okay, obviously he's not a new name, but he's made it at the expense of Khan Zadeh. And you see also Nurullahi who is also another, probably a surprise in the squad. What do you think the kind of roles these guys will fill at the end of the day? Yes, I think I think you're absolutely right. I mean, um, I think with, to the, I mean, with the exception of Nurullahi, who I believe is there due to the injuries to other players, um, such as Saeed Zatullahi and Ali Karimi, the other two have uh, almost, I mean, are almost on there on, on merit. Um, Payum and Yazman, is a goalkeeper who broke through at Pekong last season. He uh, managed to get a move to Sepahan this season. He's been phenomenal um, all the way through the season. And I think he's, he's earned the cap. I mean, he's earned the call-up, rather. His competition was uh, Hossein Hosseini at Esselol, who um, had, a, again, a brilliant season last season, but he's been benched for the majority of this season. And, and it wouldn't make sense to, to take a third-choice goalkeeper who, who is not even a starter for his club. But again, Tan Oni has been, in, like you said, in and around the squad uh, for a while. Uh, we saw him make a couple of appearances in the qualification for the 2018 World Cup. Um, he went off the radar for a while, but he's come back on. He, he had a recent move to Moshi Sazi in Tabriz. And he had, he's put in some good performances. And, and we know that Kairush has, has certain players that, that he prefers. Of course, Hansa being one, as you mentioned, and, and Tan Oni being the other. Um, so I'm not that surprised to see him there, considering the fact that he's on form and he's been playing football regularly, and the relationship that he has with Kairos has obviously helped his uh, his inclusion as well. Ejman, do you see Kanani as a sort of player who could figure into the starting lineup? Uh, well, I've been thinking about that. You know, when I made my own prediction for the starting lineups, I didn't see him uh, not even make getting a substitution because. If, let's say he plays either, like, probably in the middle, you know, uh, because that's where we lack uh, players now. Ezatullah is gone, uh, Ali Karimi is gone as well. So, uh, my guess is that Carlos Keros will probably bring in, um, next to Omid Ebrahimi, uh, Ruzbet Sheshmi there, which would be kind of a surprise, or maybe even Ehsan Haj Safi there, and, uh, uh, taking Milad Mohammadi to the left or Ehsan is, if he will play at the left back, then in the middle it still will be Omid Ebrahimi and probably Ruzbe Cheshmi. 
so I, I, I can't see him getting uh, any playing time. But then again, uh, as I said before, I'm always wrong. So whatever I say, it would probably be the opposite that we will start uh, in the Asian Cup. So both Kanoni and uh, uh, Nur Allahi will have the opportunity to play in the Asian Cup for sure. And I think, sorry guys, I think um, if you look at the squad uh, a bit deeper and you, you realise and you, you see the fact that Montazari has gone as well, as well as obviously Majid Hosseini and um, uh, Mortis of Ganji. So including Kan Oni, that's four defenders, four central defenders. And then if you count Cheshmi as a central defender, that's five, which makes me think maybe he's taking Cheshmi, as Pejman said, of more of a defensive midfielder, central midfielder role in opposite to what he was during the World Cup, which was a, a, a centre-back uh, next to Pirelli Genji. So I think that might be an indication that, as, as Pejman said, uh, Ruzba Shishmi will be playing a different role to what he has done uh, in the Iranian setup so far. Oh, wait, I just remembered. Sorry, guys. M- maybe he will start with Masoud Shujai again. You know, like in the first game in the World Cup, uh, Masoud playing in the middle, being kind of awful, you know, uh, his role in the World Cup is kind of interesting, oh sorry in the, in the squad, he's the guy that motiva- motivates the younger players uh, keeps the group together, being professional as a leader, outside the pitch, so I I think this will be probably Masoud's final uh, games with the World Cup uh, with the team, and he will probably retire, I can't see him playing anymore so maybe he will get some more playing minutes, uh, and I'm, I'm sure he's really motivated to to prove himself after his World Cup. There's another player coming in all of a sudden, and he, his experience against these kind of teams, uh, weaker teams, uh, is much better than w- w- when he's playing against them. So maybe this is his final time to shine. Yeah, before going on to a deeper analysis of the midfield, I want to stay with the defense and with you, uh, Sina. Vulia Kafuri, who missed out on the World Cup, is back in the squad. What sort of role do you see him playing? Is it possible that he may be playing a little bit further up front, especially with the injuries on the wider positions up front? I think it's, it's definitely a possibility. And of course, with, with Kairos, as we've learned over the years, it'd be silly to, to rule um, anything out. Um, but I think as, as, as far as I'm concerned about the right back spot, I think Reza Yon has, has got it nailed down. And I'd be very surprised if Kafuri starts there ahead of him. Even when you consider the fact that uh, Rafu, uh, the fact that Rezoyan has made the switch, a late switch to to Qatar, um, well, Rafuri does have experience of playing as a right midfielder, right winger, role, similar in terms of positioning, similar to Khosrow Haidari, who who could play as a right winger and a right back. Uh, and we saw Rafuri in the last Asian Cup. Um, he was he was really good. He he kind of surprised everyone with his performances. He uh, he put in that cross for the Osman goal against Iraq. So, uh, and, and considering the fact that we are playing lesser teams, he's more of an attacking option uh, through fullback or even out wide. And as you said, with the injuries that we've had, it would it would make sense if if we did see him um, at the at a at a further uh, attacking uh, position than his usual right back. Benjamin, I'm going to go back to you again and, and one of your favorite topics at the fullback position, left back to be precise, looking at the Iran-Palestine game as well. Did you see any hints of what is to come? Who will start at left back for us at the Asian Cup? Yeah, uh, for listeners out there, the Iran-Palestine game ended 1-1 behind closed doors. We could only see the goals and, of course, uh, the lineups. Um, but, yeah. Uh, I mean, I would be once again disappointed if uh, Mirad Mohammadi won't make it. Uh, he got uh, a late cut in the World Cup games, uh, made some uh, substitutions, and maybe <laughs> his in the World Cup was his uh, amazing uh, throw-in in the late game against uh, Portugal, right? So, um, this time, uh, listen, the thing is, if we have to make this choice between Ehsan and Milad, which seems to be Kerosh favorite topic. Uh, we have to now think as a team that uh, will control the game, will have more position, and will need to attack and must win the games. So, in that, if we think like that, then my option will be Mirad Mohammadi because he's a better. Uh, he runs 
up and down his left side probably better than Ehsan. I think uh, he's a better defender than Ehsan, but maybe he's not at all round as Ehsan. So it's it's possible that we will see both Milad and Ehsan starting in the same game, uh, with Ehsan being in the middle. And when we meet tougher opponents such as maybe Japan, South Korea, Australia, uh, South, Saudi Arabia, uh, we will probably go back to the uh, the way that Iran usually plays and we just call it their strengths. And that's the uh, kind of defensive, uh, controlled, hard-working team with Ehsan playing at the left back. Sorry, yeah, Ehsan playing at the left back once again. So I'm sure we will see some shifts and some changes uh, on that position. And probably if Ramin does one bad game, uh, Wurya will be there at the right side just waiting to get that, opp- that opportunity. And in my opinion, Vurya is a more well-rounded player than Ramin, but Ramin is better at some uh, uh, points, which makes him the first choice. So I think our opponents will be decisive for who will play in the left and r- right sides. Sina, do you see it differently at left back, or do you agree with Pejman? No, I agree with Pejman. I think, as he said, it was it was a massive surprise in the World Cup when we saw Mohammadi benched, more so because not only is he our best left back, but he there was no indication that Mohammadi was going to be dropped. He uh, the majority of the of the World Cup qualification games, Mohammadi started as left back, and and rightly so. We've seen his rise. We've seen how. Uh, how well he's developed since his move to Europe, and I think the circumstances of the World Cup, when when you when you think about it, the the, the tough group, the tougher position, and even compare it to Asian Cup, it's, it's a different circumstance. And I think, uh, in my mind, I, I don't think uh, there is a question of whether Mohamedi will start or not. I think he will. I think I would love to see Harsafi go back into central midfield, um, but not to play with Ebrahimi, but to play instead of Ebrahimi. Um, but certainly in, at left back, as Pejman said, I think um, Mohamed is our best option. Uh, he's he's much he's much more attacking than, than Hoy Safi. He, of course, we know about his stamina, his pace, and I think he will definitely give a lot of headaches uh, to opposition, especially when we play against a lesser opposition where uh, we need uh, more threats down wide areas, uh, more options uh, down the line, and him. Andres Oyan will, will definitely provide that um, uh, if, if, if they do so. Before wrapping this section up and moving on to midfield, I will give you the listeners the list of goalkeepers and defenders. This time there was no real drama over the debate over who starts at the Asian Cup. I think everyone is in agreement that Ali Reza Bieranvan has cemented his position as undisputed number one. Where is Ali Reza Haigri though? Answers on a postcard please. So the list is Bayron Vand, Amir Abedzadeh, who we had a very interesting interview with recently. Listen to that if you haven't already. Payam Niazmand, Ehsan Haj Safi, Pejwan Montezeri, Ramin Rezaian, Murtaza Pueli Ganji, Milad Muhammadi, Burya Kafuri, Majid Hosseini, Hossein Kanani, and Ruzbe Cheshmi, who I would name last because I believe he was named as a midfielder in the Asian Cup squad list. But this is something that we've already discussed a little bit and may discuss going for- forward. Talking about midfield, I think it's been a disaster with the number of injuries we've had, especially with the news about Saeed Ezatullahi. He will be really missed, I think, between all the players who are injured or out of form. He was the s- one single player who I wouldn't have wanted out of the lineup, especially at this level where his class is well above a lot of the other central midfielders in Asia. So, Pejman, I'm going to start with you. Who is going to fill the void of Ezatolahi? And would we have to change our style of football because he's missing? I'm going to say that nobody can fit his shoes at this moment. Nobody can replace him. That's how good he's been and how important he is. So, uh, I just hope that the collective and all other players really step up and uh, make his uh, loss in the squad 
being uh, something that we don't uh, re- need to get remembered uh, by other teams that will be attacking us or be making sure that we're really vulnerable <laughs> in the middle. Uh, but for who will be starting, as I mentioned a little before, uh, I can't see Omid Ebrahimi getting benched, especially now that uh, he's probably the only central midfielder that's that natural central midfielder and been that for a long time. Uh, we, we mentioned uh, Kanani and we mentioned uh, Nur Lahai and we mentioned Cheshmi and also men- mentioned Exxon. Uh, so I, I do believe that all four of them are capable of starting against uh, uh, Vietnam, against Yemen, against Iraq, the, the teams in our group. The thing is, how will they cope against better teams? I mean, uh, if Nur Lahai Will have, will have trouble against, uh, let's say, Vietnam. I don't think he will get any playing time. Uh, so probably he will, or even Masoud, yeah. So, so I think he will go safe here, uh, Kairosh. So Ehsan Hajsafi or Masoud Shojai. And Ehsan being maybe, uh, uh, being able to, to, to control the, the offensive kind of, uh, role in the midfield and I mean, or, or me doing the more defensive parts or if it will be Masoud, maybe he will get a more free role in the middle and making Omid uh, much more important in the middle and if we start, if we, he starts like with Amiri on the left side, he will probably do some uh, heavy work in the middle or Taremi or whoever who starts up front will do a much more uh, will have a much more important defensive work if Masoud Chojai starts. Uh, so it will be really interesting to see how uh, Kerosh will start against uh, Qatar the 31st of December. Uh, it's a good opponent for us at this moment. And I don't think, uh, I hope at least, that uh, he will try a lineup. <laughs> will be as similar as possible to the ones that we're playing in the Asian Cup because these players need to play together and learn each other much more than they had uh, in the previous times. So that's my guess. Sina, do you see Keros playing with a two or a three in central midfield? I think that uh, he, he will not change his formation. Um, and as we've seen that he will be playing, he has been playing 4-1-4-1 for, for a I would say since 2014 or 2015 Asian Cup, I don't think that will change. I think uh, there will be a number six with two central midfielders uh, in front of him. But uh, I think it's the personnel that that, um, makes the formation differ. And I know that we are all still um, really hyped up about Ibrahimi in the World Cup and so on. But it's it's easy to forget that prior to the World Cup, he's he's not been any... He's not produced any good performances for the national team. And that's because, in this, as I said, in the circumstances of the World Cup, when you go up against the Portugals and the Spains or even the Moroccos, I wouldn't say it's easy to perform, but when, when the whole team, when you're playing as a team, your weaknesses are, are covered, there's, there's no vulnerability. And I think he, he, he shined through because of the system. I would not start him in the Asian Cup. I'm a big fan of him. I've watched him as someone for so many years. He's a brilliant player, but he, for what he's achieved in his career in Iran, and you see what how many caps he's got, there's a reason for that. And I think he, he doesn't generally perform well uh, for the national team. Uh, so we need to take the World Cup out of it a little bit uh, in regards to any player, because World Cup, as I said, different circumstances, different mentality, different groups, different targets to achieve. You can't tell me you're going into the game against Yemen or Vietnam with the same mentality that you would when you're going against Portugal or Spain. Uh, which is why, I mean, Bolak, you, you've always said this, and I know this, Pejman knows this, we've always struggled against smaller teams specifically because of, because of this. So I would say for me, and uh, I think Cheshmi would probably be the better option to start as the number six. I would personally go with Hoysafi and Odus in front of him. We've seen... Kairos try to do in a more central role. I think it would be a lot more useful than um, starting Amiri, who again, a lot of people were against him going to the World Cup, but uh, but Kairos's decision to take him was turned out to be right because in those circumstances and in the games that we were, 
his legs, his fighting spirit was really needed. And he will be needed once we get to the latter stages. But in the group stages, I don't think we need Amiri or Ibrahimi. Um, but again, there are other options available as well. As, as Pejman said, Masoud could play there. We saw Masoud playing the number six role again in, in that horrible friendly against Turkey, where Cheshmi was centre-back. I'm sure you guys remember. Both of them were, were an absolute disaster. But again, Kevich is unpredictable. I wouldn't be surprised if, if Masoud starts in that number six role. But one thing I definitely want to see is uh, Kodus and Harisafi, both of them playing in, uh, in, in central midfield. I think uh, you brought up Saman Godus and he was the next player I was going to talk about. Um, leading up to the Asian Cup, I think we've seen Saman play in that central midfield a few times, I think. I was quite confident that he would be a starter from that position. I still believe he is going to be a definite starter this time around. You just can't drop him. But with the injuries, especially with Kolizade, uh missing out, Saeed being out, that... Overall, do you still, Hejman, do you still see someone start? If you had to bet, would you say he would start in that central midfield, like Sina mentioned? Or do we think he may be more of a factor in one of the three forward positions? I do believe that he would be the second choice he mentioned, uh, one of the forwards in the, three, in the top three. Uh, that's where he belongs and that's where he can uh, shine and this time around, as as Sina mentioned, we can't compare to the World Cup, although we like to because Iran played good, and that's our 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 closest reference we have so far. Because after the World Cup, there haven't been so many games, and there's been so um, yeah, it, it's it's hard to do it, to say something about the games against Venezuela and Bolivia and so on. But uh, for me, first of all, Salman is definitely a starter and a uh, starting player, and for the second. Uh, I do believe that he needs to sh- prove himself what he is capable of, of in this uh, Asian Cup, and he needs the help of the other players uh, much more than he had before. He's a player that, when he gets the ball, he can do great passes, great crosses. Uh, his free kicks are really good, but just playing ten, fifteen, twenty minutes, you usually get kind of stressed, and uh, you want to overperform and do more than you're maybe capable of just to show yourself that you want to, and everybody that you can be capable of starting. But for me, uh, someone uh, have to be in the upfront. I mean, even, uh, you know, even replacing Osmoon. I'm not saying that he should replace Osmoon. I'm just saying he can play at that position as well, you know, being the front striker because uh, he's, uh, he, he knows that he has to work uh, defensively, defensively as well. So we won't see him just standing outside the goal like uh, what's the name of that uh, Dutch player that played in Manchester United? Uh, uh, Rude. Rude. Yeah, Rude. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to compare them because they have nothing in common. But Rude never was a really good uh, defensive kind of player, but he scored. But uh, in Iran, everybody has to play defensively, even against teams like Yemen and Vietnam. I don't think we should underestimate that. Uh, so, yeah, my, my answer is someone up front as much as possible. Before talking a little bit about players who have a bit of lack of match fitness due to some horrible injuries and bad luck this season, especially those in Europe, I want to talk about one specific player who we haven't heard too much about since the World Cup, Mehdi Taremi. Do you guys see him as a starting lineup player again on the left, left forward position? Sina? Um, it's difficult to say, but at this point, I would say so. I, I think, um, again, he's one of those players that Kairos seems to like. He, he offers him different options. And against Asian opponents, he's, he's generally done well. I mean, if you go back to the World Cup qualification, he scored some really crucial uh, goals for us. And um, I think we need the goals, uh, considering how Osman has been playing, I would say, in the last 12 to 18 months for the national team. Um his goals have, have dried up a little bit, but, but I think there's a there's an opportunity for Ptolemy um, to really um, uh, be the star performer in this World Cup if he is given the chance. I mean, of course, there's Jaun Bakhsh as well on the other side, but uh, again, we, we've discussed this at length numerous times that his performances for the national team aren't necessarily as good as the ones he's, um, he's produced at club level. But um, it, it'll definitely be uh, competition again for the wide areas. 
like Pejman said, you would like to see Kudus in that area where he's playing on the left, he can cut into his right foot, he, he gives a lot of attacking uh, attacking threats. Um, you also have Chani Mahazari Fan, who's, who's played that wide role, and Vahid Amiri. So there's a, there's a few options, but I would say at this point, um, I don't think he's giving Kairos any reason not to start him when it comes to his performances for the national team. Putting aside the miss against Portugal, which I'm still hurting about. But um, I think generally, from what is expected of him, whether it's in the defensive phase or the attacking phase, I think he's generally done a good job and, and I can't see him. I, I, I'd say it's, it's very difficult to see him being dropped. Hejman, um Sina mentioned Sadar Osmond's goals drying up a little bit. Of course, our style in, at the World Cup and around the World Cup didn't help him, but he's had a relatively decent season this year in Russia for the first time in a while, and he's had a few goals as well. Do you see him as a definite starter, and do you see him continuing to play 90 minutes, or do we have to look at alternative options as well? Salah Osmoun is the starter for sure. Uh, he is still forwards we ever had, probably. Um, you know, uh, it's it's we we have to at this point when we talk about Osmoun try to cut out everything that's outside the pitch. You know, he he being kind of emotional, maybe immature and not too ready for for some of the bigger tasks. But at the field, he is this. This beast, this monster, almost uh, in in the air with, with some of his great great goals uh, with his head are really really entertaining to watch because well we called Bahid Hashemi on the helicopter because uh, he was able to be in the air for so long and uh, score some goals with his head. If he's the helicopter, I know then uh, uh, Sadar Azmoun should be like uh, SpaceX from uh, Tesla or something because he is. Way better than Vahid Hashemi on, uh, in the in the air. He is really good one on one when he comes uh, along with the goal. He's got the speed. He's got uh, the passion. I would say maybe uh, that's something that's good and bad for him. If he just know how to use that uh, uh, energy that he have in the right way, he could develop to be a really good player. Uh, Osmoon is a starter. Ninety minutes. Um, why not? I mean, uh, he showed in uh, Russia this this last uh, three four months uh, that he's capable of it. He's been playing good. He's done some great assists, uh, and uh, he's a game changer. So I can see him playing ninety minutes. And also, I think as as you said, Bobak, like, it's uh, it's a different competition now. We saw the World Cup. He he did well in the World Cup, uh, considering the um, the opposition we were playing, the way we were playing. But this is more, I would say it's more that he's his tournament. I think he will have the ball in the box to attack a lot more often than he did in the World Cup. And, and I think that it works. It suits his, his, uh, his playing style. There was, there was a few occasions in uh, the game against Morocco, especially when uh, he got the ball deep, but he doesn't necessarily have the passing ability to start a move or, or set up an attack, which... In this competition, you wouldn't expect him to to get the ball deep to to start counter attack. So I think it would work to his favour. Um, and we saw in the 2015 Asian Cup, he scored a, a, I mean, an amazing goal against Qatar. I still remember it, but of course against Iraq. And, and um, I would say he will have a, a good tournament. Fingers crossed. But what do you think, Bobak? Where do you stand on the whole, not just the Osman issue, but the um, the central midfield uh, roles as well? I think that we can't uh, underestimate the season Vahid Amiri has had. He's probably been one of our best, if not the best, uh, European-based uh, player during the first few months. So it's tough to see him being dropped, in a way, for, by Kirosh. So I see him playing there. I feel Ehsan will probably figure in defense rather than midfield because it's been quite a while since we've really seen him and Carlos's plans at that position. I think something may have clicked, and Carlos sees him more as a left back now than a midfielder. Um, like you said earlier, I don't see us uh, replacing Saeed Ezatolahi directly, so we may have to compensate with a little bit of a different uh, style or approach to the midfield. I don't think we will have as much elegance or uh, distribution from central midfield, neither Ruzbe Cheshmi or Omid Ebrahimi, uh, 
or even Masood in that position could compensate for Saeed. Saeed's also a physical uh, presence there. He's good in the air, so he's an all-round central midfielder. Difficult to see him being replaced. But Saman, on the Saman point, I feel that he will probably figure as one of the three early in the tournament, but may move up front a little bit. But that brings me up to my next question, and it's for you, Sina. One of my favorite players who's never really been a regular or cemented his place in the squads, Mehdi Torabi, is included. I think probably at the expense of Ali Golizadeh, who also had a good season at Charleroi, but injury kept him out. Do you see him figuring into the starting lineup, Sina? Um, I think... I think it will depend on the fitness of Jahan Bakhsh to a certain degree. As we know, Jahan Bakhsh has been dealing with, is it a hamstring injury that he's been nursing for a while, if I'm, if I'm correct? Yeah, it's a hamstring. Missing, yeah, so he didn't, um, he didn't, he didn't start a lot of games at the beginning of the season, but that was due to him, uh, settling into the pace of Premier League and so on. And once he did start playing, he, he got that injury and he's been out for a few weeks. So, uh, I think there are question marks over his, his match fitness, over his sharpness. Um, I'm not sure if he will be able to play uh, 90 minutes in every game, which means Torabi will have the chance to uh, to play. I would say those chances may be limited and may only come against lesser opposition in the group stages. But he's still a good player to come on the ben- uh, to come off the bench and, and do a job. We've seen him um, do this before in, in friendlies or even in, in World Cup qualification. Um, he's uh, very direct when he gets on the uh, on the ball. He likes to attack fullbacks, and uh, and I think that's something unique in this team. We don't have a lot of players, um, and with the exception of Godus and and, and Jahan Bakhsh, to a certain extent, we don't have a lot of players who have the ability to get on the ball and have the pace, have the dribbling skills, and have the creativity to um, uh, to attack fullbacks or attack defense on on their own. And I think. That directness is definitely something uh, something useful. Uh, you're right about Koli Zadeh. I've, I've always been a huge fan of him. I think that his move to Europe has certainly um, confirmed that he's a, he's a very talented footballer. Um, I would rank him above Torabi, but again, he's been so unlucky with the injury. From what I've heard, he's still um, he's still training with the team uh, to regain his uh, his sharpness. But I. I I don't know what's going on in and around in and around that whether he will come in to replace someone or, or he's just training with them until uh, he's match fit and, and go back to Belgium. I, I don't but think that we can make a change unless someone is injured. Uh, well, so which, maybe... we, which makes it even uh, more of a weird decision because if you're going to put a player on standby, then surely it would be a player who's who's fit and ready to go rather than an injured player who. Uh, you don't even know his his uh, his availability for the tournament, so we'll have to wait. It could be it could be a case of the Belgian league being probably on a winter break shortly, and maybe Olizade would be better served with the national team because it would then make more sense. Then you keep Olizade in the squad, and then maybe Torabi on standby rather than vice versa. So, but okay, we're we're on the injured. Uh, players or players lacking match fitness topic now and before moving on to Twitter questions I want to ask Pejman looking at the squad you have Hatsafi with a bit of an indifferent indifferent season after he was let go of Olympiakos he returned to Iran you have Ramin Rezaian who only started playing football uh, off the beach about six weeks ago you have Morteza Purali Ganji who was injured for probably better part of two months and he just returned to fitness and played in the last couple of weeks looking further down Majid Hosseini he started with Trabzonspor had a little bit of a bad spell of form but only regained his spot this week I think it was you have Masoud and Ashkan who are on the wrong side of 30 then you have Jahan Bash, who like Sina said didn't uh, gain a starting lineup place early in the season. As soon as he broke through, he got injured. So a lot of big question marks over his match fitness, especially in a position where pace, uh, fitness, stamina matter in that wide uh, right spot. Going further, you have someone who's had a good season. Then you have Karim Ansari Farad, who's probably had less than 90 minutes combined all season long. I think he just played about 35 minutes this past uh 
weekend, but before that he was getting five minutes, two minutes, one minute. So a very, very bad season for Karim in that sense. So looking at that, Tejman, do you see this hindering us during the tournament? Yes and no. Yes, for the obvious reasons that you said, these players haven't get haven't gotten enough playing time in uh, Europe or been injured. Uh, no, because these players are, have been under Carlos Karras for some time now. Uh, they know the moment when they step into the pitch, what what's expected from them, what they will need to do, and what the other players next to them will need to uh, do. I think uh, by now, Karras, uh, uh, his tactics... Uh, are so well studied by these players uh, that it's okay if one or two players that usually play doesn't play or that they maybe are uh, have played not so much in their clubs but are ready to, to shine for the national team. I mean, it's, it's a special aura around the national team. I mean, they really, uh, at least for the outside world, want to show that they're, they are... A one squad, a one team. That's that the team is 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 the most important thing, and you don't have a bunch of uh, super divas or super good players uh, that uh, control the the entire squad. Uh, so that's at least my hope that this squad is good enough to be able to handle these kind of problems. Although I would have loved to see. Karim playing 90 minutes uh, every week, or at least starting a game. And, uh, yeah, uh, Mortez Opurel and Ganji not being injured. Majid, I'm not so worried, because uh, yeah, even if he was uh, uh, benched for a couple of uh, games, or three, four games, stuff like that, when he played, as, as you said, last week, uh, he did really good. And he looks so solid and he's becoming a more and more of an important player in the national team. Uh, so I think these kind of problems is something that the national team, every national team, have to deal with, more or less. Uh, Iran isn't unique in, in that uh, sense. Uh, if you look at maybe the Vietnamese players, say they have a great uh, season, but they have a great season in Vietnam. That doesn't tell us much. Maybe it's better to to have a... Karim kind of way in the last two, three months. You don't play so much, but at least you, you train with a championship team and you know that you're good enough to uh, score a lot of goals, both in the clubs uh, that he's played in Greece and, and at the national team level. So I'm not that worried. It's more a mental game that Iran have to deal with now. And that's, the, that's our biggest opponent at this moment, to, to make sure that we don't uh, feel feel sorry uh, for ourselves and uh, and say, oh, what a pity, and we really need these kind of players. There are players ready to, to step up in those shoes uh, in, in every uh, every position in the field, even Said Ezzatola is. So I'm, I'm trying to be hopeful here. <laughs> Thank you, Pejman. Uh, before asking for your predictions for the starting lineup, I'm going to go through a few... Twitter questions for you guys. One of the first ones, I mean, I think from Motlach, Samad Agha, uh, when can we stop playing friendlies, warm-up games against weak teams or play against legit opponents? Uh, I think I will take that one. I think we had a decent preparation with a couple of games against South American teams earlier. So I think it's been one of our better preparations for a major tournament. And now we're playing against uh, Qatar, who's a decent uh, Asian, West Asian side, at least, from the Gulf. And then you have Palestine before that. So I think, in terms of friendly opponents, it's probably been one of our better uh, better ones till now. But the first question I have for Sina, which player could transfer to Europe after the tournament? It's a little bit early, but it's from Samson. Uh, could you tell us who do you feel has that potential during this tournament? It's difficult to say because the um, majority of our players, uh, the starters at least, are playing in Europe already. I think even when you consider Torabi, he's, he's just been transferred to Persepolis in the last couple of weeks. He started training with them, which completely rules out a move to Europe, uh, certainly in this transfer window, maybe over the summer, but uh, I, I wouldn't think that it's likely. I think the obvious one is Bayron Man. 
he did have some offers after the World Cup, after the great performances that he put in. He decided not to take them or not to seriously think about them because of the situation at Pierce Police and the transfer ban and so on. And he helped them reach the uh, AFC Champions League final. I think another good tournament from him, and we will see um, offers coming in for him again uh, from Europe. I personally don't think that uh, he is good enough to play at a top five European league, but I think when he is given the chance, he should definitely take it. It's good for his development. It's, it's a better... I mean, when you consider his story and how far he's come, I think he, he deserves the chance to play at the highest level in Europe, and he's, he's worked hard for it. So there is no question that there will be offers for him uh, during the January transfer window. Uh, whether he will take them or not uh, is a uh, is a different matter. Rezo Young is another one. He's he was in Europe last season. Um, I mean, of course, we all three of us followed him closely when he was um, at Ustende in Belgium. He didn't have a great start to his career there, and he was benched uh, for the majority of the of the season. So, again, when you add that to his failed move to Turkey and you put down his resume, it doesn't look too good. And considering his age, I think he's is he twenty eight? I think if I'm correct. Um, so age is yeah, he's twenty eight. Yeah, so it's it's against him as well. But again, you, you never know. A very good tournament and anything is possible. But I, I I don't think apart from them, there's any other players that you would think and say, uh, you know, Europe uh, is a possibility. Again, Tardy is there, but we'll have to wait and see. I know he, we know he's had offers, but he didn't take them. So it's just a matter of. Uh, hoping that they have a good tournament first and foremost, that they help you run, uh, have, have some sort of success, and then uh, we'll see what kind of offers uh, come in for them. Uh, Pejwan, next question for you from Sherv, uh, S66RVN. How can Khonza be left out over Kanani? And he also mentions Rezai, Kavi Rezai, not given a chance, but he's been injured, so that's why he's not there. So do you see anything in Khonza out for Kanani? Does it really matter? To be honest, it doesn't matter that much. Um, Khanzada had had a couple of good games uh, for Perspolis this season, sure. Um, but I don't see them as that kind of different players that, that one is much better than the other. I mean, if it would have been Khanzada, I would say, okay, it's Khanzada, it's Kanani, it's Kanani. For me, I don't think it, it will make that big of an impact. Uh, I, I'm sure that these players uh, at tops will get some rotation time. If Iran is already uh, won their two first games, maybe they'll be able to start or be more able to uh, to make a substitution in the second half. So uh, for me, I don't make that kind of a big difference. But I haven't seen Kanoni that much uh, either, but uh, since he plays in Moshin Saudi, and it's hard to follow those kind of games. But is that that big of a difference? Also, I think in the World Cup, the fact that we only took one right back was one of the main reasons why Khonza did go, because he could play at right back and centre back. Whereas in this tournament, you, you can see that Kafuri Anders are you know, going, so there's really no need for a, a player who can play two positions uh, in defence, as we've got it all, uh, got all covered anyway. Final question from Twitter, and it's a good way to wrap the show up effectively. Uh, before giving your predicted lineups, is from Leaky at football underscore Barca one. He says, "What do we need to do in order to secure at least a final spot?" So um, I will rephrase it a little bit, guys. Where do you see Iran finishing? What is your prediction? We're going to have a preview show, of course, against our opponents. But where do you see us finishing? In a few words, uh, Pejman first. Top four. That's all I can say at this moment. I won't say any more than top four. Sina, where do you see us finishing? I'm just going to make a quick point in regards to that. And, and that is if we approach the game, especially the group stages and the first knockout game where the opposition is, is considered lesser opposition, um, if we approach those games with the same mentality that we did against Portugal and Spain, I don't think we will be successful at all. I think when you're the underdog, you can have that fighting spirit. You can be wasting time like we did against Spain. You can be playing with, uh, you know, th- the way that we did it in the World Cup. You know, when you, are, when you have your backs against the wall, fighting against the wall, that, and so on. When, but when you play against lesser opposi- opposition, but, but that's see definitely now, does wouldn't not you work. say the mentality was right? I mean, the mentality was to give 110% fight for every ball. In that the World mentality, Cup. Yeah, at the World Cup. I mean, that same mentality 
It doesn't mean to say that the same tactics should follow the mentality, but don't you think the mentality was right? No, even in, if you're going in the to World Cup, absolutely. In the World Cup, absolutely. No, so even for now, so, even for the Asian Cup. And no, I don't think so because one of the reasons why I mean the, the game against Iraq, famous Ben Williams messed up, etc. But if you follow the rest of the game, you're fighting against everyone. And when you're playing against lesser opposition, I mean, let's go back in the World Cup qualification. Think about the game against Syria. Think about the game against China. Why did we draw those games? Because we were getting sucked into those moments of frustration. And that only comes from not being able to think clear, be calm, be composed, and and play your game with common sense and logic. So when you play with that fighting spirit against lesser opposition, you're playing in their hands because they will waste time, and rightly so. They will try and frustrate you. And when you're not calm, when you're not composed, when you're not thinking straight, you will play badly, you will drop points. And we, we suffered slightly from it in the last Asian Cup. We, we just about beat UAE. UAE were a great team, but we should not be struggling against them. It was a similar situation against Qatar and even Bahrain to a certain extent until we got the second goal in. And I think it's because of that mentality that we carry on, or that we always carry. And we, all three of us, know this, and, and I think most listeners know as well. Have we ever... Have we ever struggled against the big boys of Asia since Kerish has been here? No, we've all, I, I, as far as I can remember, we've always won the games. But I can remember plenty of times where we've struggled against lesser opposition. Lebanon won now. The China and Syria game in the last World Cup qualifications has been really, really frustrating for me. And Qatar it's because, as well. We've had struggles against Qatar as well. Well, ex- exactly. And, but they are, not the, they are not our competition to win the World Cup. Uh, sorry, to win the Asian Cup. They're not the, they're not the Japans, they're not the South Koreas, they're not the Australias, or even the Saudi Arabia uh, to a certain extent. And I think when, when you're going up against those teams, that fighting spirit will definitely help you. Definitely help you. But when you're playing against lesser opposition, when they will waste time, and as I said, rightly so, we did against Spain and Portugal, and these teams will try and waste time against us. We cannot allow ourselves to get frustrated, because that will only, only set us back so I know it's not in a few words but I think if and I hope that we can reach the top four I think if we get to semi-final we won the competition because from then on then you're playing against the big boys it's easy work for Kairos I'll be honest with you it's absolutely easy when you get to the semi-final I think that's our part done and it's, it's it's a bit weird to say but we've seen it in the last seven eight years when you're playing against Japan Australia South Korea no worries not a problem but when you got to play against possibly China in the quarterfinal, possibly Jordan in the second round, when they have nothing to lose, they will fight for their lives until the very last second. If it goes to penalties, anything anything can happen. I think it's in those games that we got to be careful. we got to think straight. So that's why I'm, I was also making the point of Vahid, uh, Vahid Amiri or Omid Ibrahimi not playing, because we need more technical players to be able to break these teams down. But that's a whole different That argument. was a long answer, you know. What, what, what's your uh, prediction? Well, yeah, yeah as I said, give yes. us one so, to four. Yeah, so I said uh, top four uh, a minimum, but if we get there, we can win it. Okay. But yeah, for what it's I worth, I would say we'll probably make the quarterfinals, but by not killing off our opponents, bad decision, maybe penalty kicks, tight game, we probably go out. So I, I feel we will fall a little bit below expectations, but hey, you probably expected that from me anyway. So just to wrap it up, uh, predicted starting lineup, and I'm not going to say for the first game, but I'm going to say for our stronger opponents, and I would include Iraq in that list. Uh, Pejman, give me your 11. Okay, a quick one. Beiraman, of course, in goal. Four defenders uh, on the each side, Milad Mohamadi and Ramir Zayan. In the middle, Majid Husseini and Murtaza Pural Ganji. In the middle... Uh, the uh, defensive midfielder, Omid Ebrahimi. Next to him, I would say Hassan Haj Safi. Uh, up front, uh, Osmoon. And three guys behind him. From the right, Adreza Jahan Bakhsh. In the middle, Sama Qodos, Qodos. And to the left, that, that's a tricky one. I'm struggling between Taremi and Ansari Fad. I start with Taremi. Sina, you're 11. Bayram van den Goal, um, a back four of Reza Yan, Hosseini Purali Ganji and Mirad Mohammadi, a central midfield, a defensive midfielder of uh, Ruzvej Cheshmi, two central midfielders in um, Esan Haj Safi and Samon Qodus, Jahan Bakhsh's right wing, Tarani left wing and uh, Osman up top. Perfect. What, what do you think good. about that? 
I, I think I'm more probably aligned with your lineup, Sina. Uh, I think that someone will probably play where you said. Uh, I think Cheshmi will probably start rather than Ibrahimi, but we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'm happy to have spent the morning with you both, and thank you for your insights. I hope the listeners enjoyed this edition of Golbezan, our 100th podcast, and we'll be back probably before the Asian Cup with a proper preview, taking into account the Qatar friendly as well. Thank you, guys. Thank Cheers you, guys. Time. Thank you. Yeah, be, be sure to follow us on social media, Golbezan. We are in uh, social media and uh, we're Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Not that active, maybe, but uh, <laughs> uh, make sure to, to holler at us. Okay, have a great one.